Um, so we've, we've probably only got about five minutes for questions um, for Zarko and, and Ernest. Um, anyone? Yeah. Christian. Christian Thorborg from Copenhagen. Uh, thank you for some nice presentations. Uh, Dr. Schillers, from your uh, latest case series, uh, considering that these are um, long-standing adductor-related problems, and I presume that they have done the training first before you do the operation, they do uh, really, really well in your investigation. Maybe you've solved the problem. Um, but you are measure them in two ways. You are using the visual uh, analog scale. So question one is, how is the specific question related to that line going from zero to 100? So what is the specific? No, I, I use zero to 10. OK, but that's the same, zero to 10. What's the specific question that then, then they give you a number or whatever? And the other one is, what, how do you uh, measure your return to play? Again, because I agree with you, that's very important. So how do you? Um, is that just when they say they're back to play, or how's that? How do you measure that? Uh, well, it's very easy to measure because um, um, if to, to to assess their return to play, you've got the um, um, uh, you, you can find that very easy the the, the transfer data about uh, professional football players. So you can find for every player um, how much games they've played, when they've played, how many games they've missed. So that's that's data which is all in the public, so that, that, that's, that's very easy to do, basically. Uh, the, the second question is, is um, uh, the VAS was, was based on the question, uh, what is the worst experience, pain that you experience when you play, basically? So it's, it's not a daily life activity VAS pain score, because that, that's, that's useless. Okay? So, so, so you want, you want the, the worst possible pain, when, because it's all about getting them back playing. That, that's what they want. They don't want to be pain-free uh, when they go to the supermarket. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank yeah. you. Andrea? Hello, Andrea Cerner. Um, I'm here from Aspetar again. No. Um, the question is regarding the, the, the fact that you briefly mentioned some ethnic variations in the adductor longus tendon, as, we, as palpation is a, is a big part of the clinical examination. Do you have any idea, any numbers on the differences? Because for the hamstring, uh, hamstring injuries, for instance, we see that it could take longer the closer uh, the pain is to the insertion could be the same for uh, doctor related injuries as well. So do you have any idea on the differences? Well, I mean the the the, the, the differences that I, that I was mentioning was purely based on experience. Uh, so based on I mean I've I've been dealing with a doctor problems in I level at least for 15 years now. So 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 that that's my my own my own perception of that. Uh, so but but I don't think you can compare hamstrings with a doctors because they're they're complete. They're complete different. Um, uh, well, they're not a completely different structure, but but um, they, they react differently. For instance, in acute injuries, you will see that, and a doctor longus will always will evolve about two centimeters maximum, while with proximal hamstring injuries, you will see that the evolution is is a lot more. Um, uh, you, you can you can have four five centimeter evolutions of the of the of the hamstrings, and, and I think. One of the reasons is, is probably that there are indeed some some uh, some uh, supporting structures because you see if if uh, sometimes if you do uh, repair that 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 actually the, the muscle is held by some of the um, uh, combined fascial structures that that go to the uh, uh, adductor longus that go to the to the symphysis so and and that actually keeps it in place so y you can't really uh, you can't really um, uh, compare the adductor longus with with the with the with the hamstrings but but it's it's very difficult to um, really to, to I mean for me to purely on, on palpation to assess whether you have a, a, a very proximal muscular tendon junction or if your muscular tension is is more distally. I mean that I mean if you want to do that you need imaging to to do that and and that's we don't uh, like ultrasound scan and we we don't do that routinely. Does that answer your question a little bit? Yes, I, I wasn't thinking so much about the uh, avulsions, more on the uh, the lower grade injuries where you find the pain and, and the distance of the pain from the insertion. Um, so, 
So if you have, for if you have, for instance, one player with a uh, with a uh, with a pain uh, maximum pain four centimeters from from the insertion, you can say, okay, now we're down at the musculotendinous junction, or let's say two centimeters from the well, insertion. Yeah. Whereas if you have one where it's only one centimeter from the insertion or less, you would you would conclude that that's uh, the tendon mainly. Uh, so to get an idea on I from the palpation whether or not it's and the muscle tendon junction or is that the tendon? Well, um, the the, the, the muscle tendon junction they 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 as I, as I said they they go back very quickly three to six weeks, um, um, and, and I think that one study from um, the American study that, that I was showing I think a lot of them probably were um, m might have been. More proximal uh, muscular tendon junction injuries, uh, rather than than uh, proximal avulsions of the fiber cartilage of the adductor longus. But 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 I, I don't think there's a, a massive difference in in for the adductor longus whether you have a, a very distal or a more proximal muscular tendon junction when the acute tear occurs at the muscular tendon junction in in the return to sport. Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, that's not my impression. Yeah, I might be wrong. Yeah. Thank you. That's just on the. Uh, Acute setting, I think the, the coaches uh, are, are considering yeah, they're, they're very much main, whether yeah, or not yeah. it's three weeks or six weeks. Uh, yeah. right. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, I enjoyed the talks as well. Thank you. Um, I thought it was interesting your point, uh, Ernest, about the difference between men and women and that uh, parasympathetic attachment of the of rectus. Um, bearing that in mind. Uh, would you hypothesize that there's any difference between men and women in terms of, of, of that complex injuries to it? And in general, I realize that we're just starting to get some good data uh, in the last 10 years about coronary injuries, but what, what, what does the literature say about, uh, about men and women uh, and the, the difference, or does it say anything in terms of the incidence prevalence of groin injury, uh, given that women are playing certainly in North America a lot more soccer, for example? Yeah, but... Um I mean, I, I've talked, uh, I've talked about it with Perry quite, quite a lot, and and and, and um, I mean, uh, wh when I was still in training, we we often saw this um, problem of central rectus abdominis pain with bilateral adductor pain, and um, we see that a lot less now. And and I think one of the reasons is that that um, in the past sit-ups and uh, abdominal strength work was a very in integral part of 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 of, of conditioning, basically. Uh, which is now largely uh, replaced by core stability work. So, so, so we don't we don't see that particular injury not that often anymore. But, but uh, that particular combination of central suprapubic pain and bilateral adductor pain is something that I've only seen in males. And uh, and and I think I, I've spoken to Per about it on on a number of occasions, uh, and he 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 hasn't seen it in in, in women either. So, so so I think the the, the, the there is a difference. Um, um, in in what we see I, I, as in presentation uh, of males and females, you, you can you can have sp sporting hernias in, in in females, although it's very rare. Again, uh, a doctor problems you can see in 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 both males and uh, males and females. But, but again, if if you look at the anatomy, uh, the um, uh, the, the doctor longus of, of of males are are more flat, while the doctor longus uh, and you can see very that nicely that V-shaped type musculoskeletal junction at the front. While in, in females, again, it's more round, and it's almost like that uh, the, 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 the muscular tendon junction is actually rotated a bit out. So, so th there are, again, differences in, 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 in the anatomy of the adductors as well, basically. Yeah. One very last question. Uh, I think, uh, Bruce, you have the answer to that. <laughs> of our non-elite male players who play you know recreational football who get groin pain so you'd think if all the we just don't have enough female players in our country so i think uh, in north america you'd I'd have thought that would have presented as a problem at some point so i think it must be 
uh, anatomical difference rather than just level of eliteness because a lot of them play a lot of football oh, yeah. and a lot of non-elite male players <laughs> don't play as well but they still get groin pain. There's no question that participation in the North America and level of skill has increased dramatically in women's uh, football in the last 10 years uh, and uh, anecdotally we see very few uh, of those athletes or indeed uh, even semi-elite female athletes with uh, with uh, groin pain, you know, uh, symptoms. But yeah, ACL, and we kind of have evolved in understanding why that is. But I was just wondering uh, it, what it was like in the UK, but it, it's an interesting scenario. No, well, yeah, I mean, the, well, one of the problems in the UK is, of course, uh, that, um, well, it's not a problem, but uh, um, the, the, the elite professional football players, they all have private insurance. Well, the female, the females don't, and, and uh, which means that that they sometimes might come in less specialized clinics, uh, and so so you don't have the the same pickup rate of of uh, well pathology basically. Yeah, I think that might be a reason. Thank you very much uh, for a couple of last uh, excellent lectures and some good questions. And I would like to end this day by thanking everyone for the participation, for all the questions and the debate. I could see there was a lot of discussions in the coffee breaks and lunch as well. And I would like to thank all the speakers for excellent talks. I think we've had uh, a fantastic day with getting really around to all the dark, or at least some of the very dark corners of, of uh, groin and hip pain and, and all of the questions that we have raised. Maybe we've got a few solutions or ideas of few solutions, but we still have a lot of questions and a lot of very, very nice scientific work that we need to do. And we're going to meet again tomorrow morning. So please, if you could be here uh, at, late, at the latest, 8.28.25, uh, for uh, another day of uh, fascinating lectures. Thank you all very much.